And let's go with the next feature, which was the number one requested feature, dynamic components. So with dynamic components, you can decide on runtime which Lightning Web component you are going to render. You define a placeholder, and in that placeholder, you can render later at any moment that you need the component, the final component that you want to have there. Um, it's important to adopt this feature also with some caution because it can detriment performance if you don't do it in the right way. Everything is explained in the documentation. So if you plan to adopt dynamic components, go to the documentation and read which is the correct way of using the feature. And again, we have some demos. Let's go to LWC recipes and dynamic components. I have them in the JavaScript tab. Uh, here it is. OK, so this is a parent component in which I'm rendering a child component. And the child component is going to be different, a different component depending on the value that I select here. So the currently selected component is called light contact details. And if I select full, this is going to load a different component. It's not something that I'm doing with CSS or anything. This example is just a different component. And we can take a look at the source. Uh, this is not merged by the L, by, by the way. It's, it's here in pull requests. Why is not merged? Because unlocked packages are not yet supported. And uh, we are using a, an unlocked package to distribute LWC recipes. But we will merge it in the next release, which is when unlocked packages are planned to go out and this safe harbor. OK? So um, let me show you the implementation. OK, this is the recipe. So this is the HTML file for the recipe, and we define a placeholder. You define that with LWC component, and you say this component is going to be something, a property that I have in my JavaScript file, but that will have a value at some point. But we are not referencing the component in here. We are just defining the placeholder. And it is on the JavaScript file where we assign a value to that component constructor property. How do we do it? Well, every time that we change that, um, I don't remember the name of the, yeah, combo box. Every time that we change the combo box, we call this method assign constructor. And uh, what we do is to, uh, well, we use uh, map, mapping that I define here that says that if I have full in the combo box, I need to import contact tile. And if I have light, I need to import contact tile light, which are different components. Uh, this is loading at the beginning so that my component files are loaded and it doesn't have performance implications. And then I assign that constructor depending on the value that's selected in the combo box. And I'm also selected that in the con connected callback to initialize the component. Is it correct? A uh, really good use case for this feature is to use it for UI configuration in an App Exchange app. So for instance, you could have a component in your App Exchange app that renders differently depending a configuration value that the subscriber, the customer that installed the app, selects. That would be amazing, but that would be possible once the feature works in packages. <laughs> 